so one of the things trend traders are always trying to do is one read are we in a trending or are we in a non-trending period and so to answer that question a lot of traders might use the ADX indicator now you'll notice here I'm calling it ADX DMI and I'll get into the DMI in a little bit but for now just understand that the ADX which you're looking at on the bottom half of the screen is a trend strength indicator it's not bullish or bearish all it's trying to do is measure whether or not we're in a trending period and if so how strong is that trend now take a look at the the box down below one of the things you'll notice there is that there's a line across the indicator that's the 20 line and what I'm giving you now ADX was actually created by J Wells Wilder is sort of the out-of-the-box definition of, of what ADX is and ADX uh, is that black line we've got the 20 line across there and notice within the the highlighted frame we can see that ADX is low, ADX is below 20. What that's telling us is that we're in a period of non-trending or sideways action. Notice on the price chart what's going on with price right there. Uh, this is useful information because as trend traders, a lot of times we don't want to get into something that's maybe not in a trending condition. We wind up getting in, getting out, small gains, small losses. And so that black line only measures the strength of trend. It's not bullish. It's not bearish. It's just saying whether things are trending or not. Notice on the right-hand side of that rectangle, when the ADX line starts to break out above 20, uh, you notice we have that strong uptrend. And the stronger the trend, the higher the readings. And so this was an interesting time to look at this because this certainly was indicative of a, a breakout. Now the other part of this is the DMI, the Directional Movement Index component. And unlike the ADX line, which was that black line, I've taken that off and just showed the, the DMIs on here, the positive and the negative, this does measure bullish or bearish, positive and negative strength. And so the green line would be your plus DMI, the red line would be your negative DMI. Now notice on these that when one is above the other, it's really thought of as being more bullish than bearish if green is on top of the red, or vice versa, more bearish if red is on top of the green. Also understand that when we had that sideways action, and this is pretty typical of a non-trending market, you'll see a lot of those crosses by the red and the green lines. But over on the right-hand side, we see that not only did the, the green cross over the red, uh, but also held. It held and it, it also measured a strong uptrend there. Now the, the readings on these also matter uh, because the higher the readings for these, the stronger uh, the positive or the negativeness, if I can say that, of the trend would be. And so traders, what they do with the ADX DMI is they try and see one, are the conditions uh, more trending or not trending? And then two, what's the current bias? Meaning an uptrend for green or bullish or a downtrend for red or bearish. And so how do they use this exactly? Well, putting it together, one of the things that you'll see is we've got two trends here. Now, it doesn't always work like this. A lot of times there's a trend and then the stock kind of jumps around for a little bit. But this was Apple. And we actually had a strong downtrend, a little bit of a consolidation period, and then another uptrend. And so what we saw was the ADX uh, start to not only get above 20, but continue to rise. And the slope and the direction is also important on that ADX, that black line. And we also saw the red move a higher or through across the green, and it held. And so this told us two things. One. Uh, that we're in a bearish situation and two as we can see the the ADX the black line that's gaining steam and momentum uh, this tells us that yes we're seeing trending conditions and in this case we're seeing a downtrend now later uh, one of the things that you notice is the the black line um, right at the bottom of that that trend and that consolidation it sort of peaked out a little bit and started to trend down itself what that said was that the downtrend was losing steam and in fact later on we saw the green 
cross back over the red. And then that ADX line was still above 20 and started to rise again. So this signified the onset of a bullish trend. So one of the things the traders look for is one, is ADX above 20? Is it rising? Which color line is in control? And then quite often traders might either exit a position when one of the DMI lines crosses above or below, like we saw in the green circle where the red was in control, and then we saw the green. Or sometimes they might just take that as an opportunity to tighten stops. Uh, but certainly, one doesn't necessarily want to be long when the red is over the green or short when the green is higher than the red DMI, the positive is higher than the negative. Now, one of the things that traders look for as well is, okay, how do we know when a trend might be ending? And so here again, look at the top of this uptrend. We see the DMIs cross, the red or the negative going above the, the positive. And again, it didn't mean that necessarily someone had to exit. Some traders might. Some might actually tighten their stops. Uh, but as you started to see the ADX line itself start to lose value and these lines start to cross each other, uh, started to get into a little bit of a sideways or a consolidation period. And later this actually did go lower. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about is changing the settings on the ADX DMI. And one of the things that I like to do is change my settings, and, and I call this the, from Dr. Charles Schaff. And he wrote a book called AD Excellence. If you haven't read the book and you're interested in, in learning a lot more uh, than I thought ever was possible with ADX and DMI, pick that book up. In fact, it's uh, on my website uh, under the recommended list. It's going to be in there, uh, AD Excellence. Uh, but one of the things that Dr. Schaap did was he changed the settings. And generally, the one on top there is 1414. That means 14 uh, periods for the DMIs and then 14 for the smoothing or the ADX. Uh, what his settings do is he changes them to 138. And the reason why I like Dr. Schaap's settings so much is because, well, let's just take a look at the difference here. See that the one up above, that's the classic 1414, the one below is the 138. But one of the things that the general or the standard settings do is typically, and I've noticed this a lot when trends start to reverse, uh, that line, that ADX line, the black line, never quite gets below uh, the 20 area. And so what I like is, one, he changes it from a 20 line line that goes across to a 25 line and that ADX is a little bit more sensitive that black line and so this seems to, to show a lot better uh, I like the way this this sets up and again you can see the difference in the two in the two screeners there uh, in the one below or on the one all the way on the right you can see the ADX the black lines below the 25 and the one up above uh, although it's using a 20 line you're still seeing it above, uh, certainly even the 25. It's probably right around 30 or so. So I like that. I like the 13.8 setting. And again, that's from Dr. Charles Schaff for the book AD Excellence. Well, that's the ADX DMI indicator. Why do traders use it? Well, they're trying to, one, are we in a trending or a non-trending phase? And then that's so important because then you can apply the proper strategies or use your indicators in the proper way. Remember we talked about stochastics and we say sometimes it's in non-trending markets you use one application of it and in trending markets you use it a different way. So ADX DMI is very important. I like the index and hopefully this is something that you can impart into your own trading. For more information, check out www.thetradeserver.com.